Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. I've got my mic on this morning. Let's make sure it's hooked up right. Okay, so I hope you can hear me a little better. Uh, the title of this morning's talk is Times Are A-Changing. Remember that Bob Dylan song back in the 60s? Times are a-changing, times are a-changing. And times are a-changing now. I mean, I'm 86, and I've been, I was uh, an adult in the 60s. I was, I was uh, graduated from high school in 1955, so I grew up in the 50s. I remember it all. I remember the 50s and the 60s. And then the preceding decades, you know. And so here we are in 2022. And Trump is the first president in the history of the country to be criminally, well, well, he's not indicted yet, but criminally <laughs> referred to the DOJ for criminal, for crimes. So let's look back at, I've, I've been writing about the 60s, uh, 1968, that was when the cosmic egg broke open for me personally and for the culture. 1968, America cracked open into two shells. Get the image. In the 50s, America was one egg. Everybody was obedient to one reality. There was just one reality. And the news, all the media, referred to that one reality, one America. Of course, there were a lot of uh, sexual repression in the 50s and all of that. But it was, it was an America that was born out of World War II. And it was an America with the bomb, an America that was number one, an America whose industry, having switched from bullets and tanks, was cranking out cars and washing machines and dryers and the science technology that was created in the war now was turned to consumer goods and TV was coming and it was a, a, a America was number one in the world and, but there was a Cold War, but that just made America stronger because you had to beat the Russians. So anyway, in the 60s, a new generation called the Baby Boomers came of age and the egg cracked open. And the egg cracked into two eggs. And this egg that was now two is is like I you know if you have if you ever have beta Siamese fighting fish, you can get a beta tank, which will have it's divided by a opaque uh, wall, It'd be two into one like that. See, boop, and you would have a beta in each one. And if you lifted the sh if you lift the shade, so each beta can see each other, they flare up. <sighs> gonna fight, gonna fight. That's the enemy. American culture, think using the fishbowl of the, the metaphor of the fishbowl, divided into a beta tank, and it was me, us, against them. So the 60s, if you, you know, um, basic getting, trying to get down to the, the basic framework of it was a split in patriotism where one half of the country was, it was your duty to go fight the war and the other half, the younger half, below 30 half says, hell no, I ain't going. It's an immoral war, you know. It's patriotic to not go to war. It's patriotic to follow your nature, 
which says, "Don't I ain't going to that fight in that war. That's an immoral war." And the other half says, "It's your duty to go to war, no matter what. America, right or wrong." Split right there, and it was very violent. In 1968, JFK was killed. MLK was killed. The Tet Offensive in Vietnam fell apart, and uh, uh, the Democratic Convention, where the Democratic Party uh, collapsed in chaos, which brought about the the uh, conservative reaction, Republican reaction, to restore law and order. In came the Republicans to restore law and order. Remember that? The Democrats are chaotic, restore law and order. So now the party split, the world split into two viewpoints. And it has morphed along that morphing through history, boom, boom, boom. Ironically, the viewpoint of the youth has become the viewpoint of the Republicans. It's completely flipped. <laughs> so the, the young hippies are now probably, uh, probably tea parties and, uh, you know, and, and Trumpers. So Trump is kind of like the, the uh, 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 Trumpism and Trump, for me, uh, it looks like the culmination of the insanity of this split in the American fishbowl. Because when you're, when it, it's a schizophrenia. America became schizophrenic in the 60s. America became a col collective paranoid schizophrenic. Where each side is the conspiracy theory. What's a conspiracy theory? But a schizophrenic paranoia. Now, schizophrenic is a metaphor. I'm using metaphor here. I'm not saying the clinical schizophrenic. I'm seeing the, the mind that sees a, a paranoia, a, a they or, that is after us. And then we fill in the blank to any kind of whatever the they is. The pedophiles. The pedophiles are going to get us. Or whatever this absurdity of the QAnon basically is the absurdity or the end product of this original split in the 60s where the culture became two eggs, two halves of an egg. Each half, it was, a, it was an American Cold War. We just switched the Cold War from America versus Russia when that died. It came to the culture itself. Now it's the Republicans versus the Democrats. They were no longer politicians working in a, to compromise and to create a new policy. It was an identity. It was a fight for the soul of America. It was a religious war. So in the 60s, America fell into a religious war. The very thing that the Founding Fathers wanted to avoid because they created America out of the religious wars of Europe. This would be a safe place from religious wars because they knew the chaos and the death and the insanity of the religious wars of Europe and England where the Protestants and the Catholics were chopping off either heads, you know. So they created a system where religious, where it was secular governed by the laws of reason and nature and science. And it's called the Age of Enlightenment. And this ran very successfully until the 50s. I remember the 50s as the age of scientific utopia. In the 50s, you believed that science would create a utopia, which would be about now. So according to the 50s, now we would all be like the Jetsons, running around in little robot, being served by robots and running around in flying cars in a consumer paradise. That was the utopia of the 50s. We would all live like the crown. We would all live like the royals in the crown with robots dressing us, feeding us, shopping for us. Oh, oh wait a minute. We're not, we're not far from that. <laughs> but it was a utopia. And that all fell apart in the 50s, in the 60s. 
And America turned on itself like two pit bulls chained to the same tree. And that pit bull, that split, the two beta fish, <coughs> reflecting each other, evolved into greater and greater division. <coughs> and of course the division, being schizophrenic, is insane. It's up, and so anything that's, you start with a little crack, a little division, and it, and in trying to heal itself, it expands the division because all it knows what to do is to get rid of the other guy. The other side is the one causing the flare up, you see. So when it's divided into two me's, each side is a me, and I, but I hurt, you see, because I'm, divided against myself. Who caused it? Well, they did it. The Democrats did it. No, the Republicans did it. So they go wah, 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 wah. until finally it created Trumpism. It created the me president. <laughs> Trump is a personification of the me generation not so much. Don't get this personal now. If you're a member of the baby gen, if you're, if you're a member of the baby boomers, this is not personal. This is just trying to understand how the fishbowl worked. You see. Well, so you don't have to write me and say, "I hey, I didn't do that." <laughs> That's me. <laughs> if you say I didn't do that, uh, that's the me generation. Anyway. So we're kind of like trying to get a fishbowl look here of culture being a fishbowl in the American fishbowl split into dual fishbowls and that is a cultural schizophrenia. So we're trying to work our way out of this and it seems like to me that with Trump who if you, if you look at the media's, uh, particularly on the mainstream or the left media, if they left, I don't know, the mainstream media, basically media separated into two medias. You got the mainstream media and you got the revolutionary, you got the radicals, you got the Republicans, you got the Republic, you got the good people on the other side. So you got two medias now, which is a reflection of two Americas which is a reflection of a split cultural mind, which is a reflection of a cultural schizophrenia, a mental disorder. <laughs> Cultures are a collective mind, and the cultural mind is, every individual is a reflection it's like a little fishbowl of the big fishbowl. So we got the big fishbowl of the culture, which is divided into two halves, left and right, each seeing the other as the cause of their wound, their grievance, you see. And every individual is a little fishbowl that is a clone or copy of the big fishbowl. So the little fishbowls, you or me then, will go to either one side or the other side of the cultural fishbowl. And he, this this is um, Indra's net, a Buddhist vision of reality. It's called Indra's net, in which reality is a vast net where inter inter intersections intercenes. At each intersection of the net, there is a little crystal. There is a crystal ball, and that crystal ball reflects all the other balls. So each ball reflects all the other balls. It's kind of like uh, an, an iPhone. Uh, an iPhone is like a in the vast internet web, you see, the web of the internet. Every computer or iPhone is a little crystal ball that reflects all the other phones, all the other crystal ball. So each ball is the whole internet. Each phone has the whole internet in it and everything your phone does on the internet, everything you do on the internet, changes the internet, but the internet changes you at the same time. So you're changing the world and the world is changing you in a, in a reaction. 
So the cultural fishbowl that I'm talking about, trying to point to, trying to uh, get a handle on here, is that the culture became a divided fishbowl so that the fish either went to one side or the other, each reflecting the world as being divided. So if when, when we switch, and you know about if a fishbowl or water, the shape of water, that when you're in the water, you can't see the sh what shapes it. So if you look at our culture as a fishbowl of water, and we're swimming in it, all we can perceive is what's in the bowl. We can't perceive the shape of the bowl. We can't see that the bowl is dividing the fish into a left and right world. We can't see that because we're in it, you see. Only a few who can jump out into awareness. It's the fish bowl is consciousness. Our consciousness is divided into left and right, into me against them, me and I or it. Individually, it's I and it. The world's it, and those are good it's, and those are bad it's. Culturally, it's it's us and them. Those are good them's, and those are bad them's. You see. So culture is just plural instead of I. It's we. But each, but but you see, so the division is unconscious. The cultural division, the cultural fishbowl, the cultural our minds are unconscious of the fishbowl dividing us because consciousness is the in, is the in the fishbowl. So if the fishbowl is divided, my consciousness is divided, and I can't be conscious of it. <laughs> you see, catch twenty two. You see, so only a few, only some who say something is really fucked up here. <laughs> but it's not the world. It's my mind. It's my viewpoint that's shaped by my culture. So if I begin to see from that point of view that it's not the world out there that's screwed up, it's my identification with the cultural division or duality Duality. This is why the social media and all the uh, the pop non-dualism is trying to figure out what is non-dual, what is not dual or culturally imposed upon our minds. What what is free from the cultural duality or the fishbowl? You see. So a few of us, it's possible to leap out of the bowl and see in one gestalt, you see the whole fishbowl. But you're still in the fishbowl, but now you see that it's an illusion. Now you see that it's Maya. Now you see that the fishbowl is a dream. But you're still in it. You can't you're not out of it somewhere. We're still in the we wake to the fishbowl. We wake to the dream. Not out of it. You don't go anywhere. So when Ramana Maharshi was dying, his disciples said, where are you going, Ramana? And he says, I'm not, no place to go. <laughs> anyway, thanks for dropping in this morning, and, and the times are changing. So maybe we've come to the end of Bob Dylan, the end of the 60s, the end of the duality, and the Trump as the last of the me, me, the, la the me president, the supreme me, the supreme I alone can fix it, and they are the cause of the problem, you see. Perhaps we can move on and create a new fishbowl. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs>